War Games came about because um, Derek Sherwin came into the script, then script editor, came into my office and said, Terence, we need a ten-part Doctor Who, you've got to write it, and we need it in a fortnight. Which was more or less, you know, that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. It was pretty much like that. So uh, I got in, uh, I called him Mac Hulk, because I knew I'd never do it in the time by myself. I mean, it wasn't two weeks, but the time was very, very short, you know. And uh, we, we worked the war games together in uh, ten, ten episodes. And you, if I may, you were slightly disparaging about it a little while back, but I think it's terrific. Well, yeah, uh, no, I was... Uh, I've been disparaging about it for years and years. I, I developed a kind of uh, throwaway line, you know, at conventions and things. And I said, well, you know, it opens well. I mean, you've got the, you know, you've got First World War, then a Roman chariot comes out the mist. And I think the last few scenes where the Doctor's on trial by the Time Lords, I think that's good. But in between, it's a lot of running up and down corridors and captures and escapes and things. Which is actually largely true. Um, but it doesn't feel like that. As a well, viewer, it doesn't feel like that. The thing is, um, it came out, it was brought out again, you know, in a, uh, what do they say, refurbished, re something. Remastered. Yeah, in a remastered edition, you know. And uh, the Doctor Who magazine reviewed it at great length, you know. And uh, the, the review started off. Terence has been talking rubbish about this show for years and I was highly <laughs> delighted, you know, because it was a very favourable review and lots of people have come up and told me they really like it, it's their favourite show, so, um, I mean, at the time, I, you know, I mean, a ten-part Doctor Who is nonsense, you know, it's <laughs> ridiculous and all of what I thought at the time was, oh, thank God we got away with it, you know, we actually got a show out of sorts, you know, but... Uh, no, I, I, I've always been very pleased about it. its uh, its new status, as it were. <laughs> and so you're saying about the show was in chaos when you uh, came on board with it. You turned it around and took it to new heights. How, well, did, that, how did that happen? How did that happen? <laughs> well, I, I just wanted to sort things out. Um, the main the main problem always, or almost with any show, is scripts. And people don't realise how difficult it is, you know, to get a good set of scripts in. And, uh, I mean, I once went to uh, a big BBC meeting, uh, chaired by Hugh Weldon, I think, you know, in those days, in which they were discussing the fact that a lot of BBC shows were coming in over time and over budget, you know, with big overspends. And uh, what was the cause of it? And what the cause of it was, uh, you know, they got to in the end, was late scripts. Everything stemmed from that, you see, because at a certain time, a direct, well, in those days, a, a director joined with a team of people, and he got a limited time to do a very difficult show. If you've got no scripts to give him, he can't do anything. You know, so he's limited time, he's dribbling away. <laughs> I mean, Barry Letts... Uh, Direct, before he was producer, uh, Barry Letts directed uh, that one in which Patrick, Patrick Troughton has a double. What was it? Uh, Enemy of the World. Enemy of the World, yeah. And he said when he arrived they handed him one script and that wasn't any good, you know. So, <laughs> so you know, my main thing became, uh, you know, the motto was good scripts in on time. And the secret of that is to pick your writer as early as you can and what we used to do was uh, get the writer in talk to him generally, take him out to lunch, talk to him uh, see what kind of... and we would also have ideas of what kind of show we wanted and we'd discuss that with him and give him an idea of the sort of thing we wanted and then he'd go away on my storyline but you see he wasn't doing as it were on spec what the others, what Bryant and Sherwin used to do is say, we need some ideas for Doctor Who, and no more. So they'd send ideas in, they'd say, no, we don't like that, you know, they never had any scripts. But um, if he's writing something where he knows, you know, he's more or less on the right lines, and uh, you just nurse him through it, you know, uh, you know, allowing for the fact that writers are devious, lying, treacherous bastards, as I know full well from having been one, you know. I used to say, don't try any of the excuses on me, I've used them all myself. <laughs> <laughs> over the years. 
How do you look back on your time in Doctor Who now? How do you how do you feel about it? What does it? I don't. Not oh, back on it. It's I mean, on, day, on days like this, <laughs> on days like this, when no, you on days like this, you know, the memories come back because you're asking the questions, and uh, you know, it was what I do feel, you know, is that my life has been incredibly lucky, totally unplanned, you know. I mean, if I well, if I hadn't uh, rented a room in Max Holt's house, I never got to know Mac, and I would. Well, I would certainly have taken much longer to get into television because he was, as I say, he was like my mentor. If I hadn't got on to Crossroads and met David Sherwin, I'd never got on to who. You know, it's all uh, all luck, pure luck. And, uh, I, you know, I just feel I was very fortunate. And, you know, the fact that I'm still, that I'm here, that we're talking, you know, um, and I joined, <coughs> I joined here in 68, you know, is, um, just shows what, what an influence it's been.